Hi everyone, trust you all are doing well. This episode was requested by one of our viewers in order to make use of models when we update, edit, create or delete a DAC. So that's what we're going to do this episode. Please make sure you have a Jetstream installation when we're going to do this because we're going to use some of Jetstream's views to actually create this. All right. And another note that I just want to mention to you guys, at the end of the series, we're going to make use to actually upload images to with Livewire. So please stay tuned for that. So I'm going to do that. Just be patient with me for that. All right. Let's get started and we actually going to create the button. So if we create the tag, we need to get a model to actually create the tag. We're going to use the same store Livewire component. Right, so we're going to use this same store Livewire component and to actually do that. Right, so the first thing, I'm not going to make use of the email, so I'm going to delete that and I'm just going to keep everything else the same. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is we need to create another method in property in here that's actually responsible for actually opening or closing the modal. Okay, so that we're just going to call this one open modal. Okay, so you can obviously call it whatever you want, but default, I'm just going to set it to false. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a public function, and inside this one, we're going to do open uh, modal uh, to create tag okay so kind of very descriptive so open model to create tag so that's what we're going to call it and what we're going to do is we're just going to say this and then we can just going to reset the error bags so reset error bag so that's the first one the second one we're going to do is we're going to set this and then we're going to just that property that we just created the model we're going to just set that to true Okay, so if we click the button, then it's going to call on this method and it's just going to open the model to true. Okay, so by default, we set it to false and here we're just going to open the model. Okay, so that's it. So now that's the only changes we need to make to our store method. So nothing else we need to add right here. So the next thing we're going to do is we need to go to our view. Let's go to the view right there. There's a couple of changes because we're obviously going to need now to include the modal as part of this package okay so let's quickly do that all right so the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to encapsulate everything with a div and with a padding of four all right so that's the first thing i'm going to do so let me just move this up in there all right and i'm going to get this section everything inside the section i'm going to paste it in here as well all right, so that's basically the first part. Now, the second part is we need to add a basically a create button, okay? And then we need to have our alert message, okay? So this is going to come basically on its own. All right, so let's quickly create a div, and we're going to create this one flags. I'm just actually going to remove the email from here as well. I'm not going to make use of that. So let's quickly add a flags, and we're going to add a gap all four right so that's the first thing all right now here we're going to make use of jetstream's button so that's why i said that you make sure that you have a jetstream installation all right so that's our button right here so what i'm going to do is when we click this button what we're going to do is we're going to call on that method so let's say why click and we're going to call that method of open um, this one open model to create tag okay so we're going to call on that one and we're just going to set wire uh, loading attribute we're just going to set it to disable so while it loads we just need to disable that button so otherwise someone's going to click it again so disabled like that okay so now i'm just going to add some classes in here so let's quickly add a class okay let's give us some room here all right so let's give it a class and we're just going to give it the background, a green background color. Okay. And we're just going to give the hover background color just a little bit lighter. Uh, let's say 500, not too much. All right. And this is, we're going to call this button a uh, create button. So create tag. Like that. Okay. We can actually use for the local like this. So if we want to add localization later or 
I don't think in this series because that's a lot of work. All right, the next thing is we need to, for the alert message, what we're going to do is we're going to create a div with a class of width, uh, 10 out of 12. How did it do that? Okay, let's just do it like this. All right, so there it was because of Emmet. Now the thing is we're going to put our alert message in there. Okay, just like that. Okay, so now we've got our alert message in here in the div. Okay, so that's basically our heading div right there. Okay, so that's part. The next part that we're going to do is we need to kind of create a dialogue model. Modal. Okay. Right, just keep, still keep your section. Don't delete it because otherwise you have to retype a lot of things. Let's start off with the first one. XJet uh, dialogue uh, modal. Okay, so that's the first thing. So that's our modal right there. In order to actually view it, let me just show you where this is coming from. Right, under resources, views, uh, vendor, components, you will see there's a dialogue, where is it? Dialogue model, this one right here. So it's got a whole lot of things in it. We've got the title, we've got the content, and then we have footer. So we're going to make use of this. And it's already kind of baked in. So if we go to the modal itself, this one right here, you can see it's making use of Alpine JS to actually like we did with the button and all that kind of stuff in here. So instead of having to create all of this, you kind of have it out of the box, ready for you to work with. Okay, so that's why I'm using it, because if we need to get used to JStream stuff, it kind of help you out a lot. All right, so the first thing we're going to add in here, we're going to add a wire model. Okay, so model, and the model is going to be that open model. Okay, so by default, we set it to true or false. So by default, so if we go to the store method right here, uh, this component right here, you will see that the class, we can have an open model, we set it by default to false. So this will basically come as false. All right, so the next thing is the X slot inside the model. Okay, and we're going to give it a name. So as I shown you right there, it's got a name, two, two slots that it requires. It requires the title. And is requiring the content. So let's quickly create that slot again. And we're going to call this one name is going to be content. Okay, so let me quickly open that again. I look. Let me open. As you can see, it's expecting a title and it's expecting content. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. All right, so that's the first one. So this is the title. So I like to kind of name my things. So if I scan over the document, I can kind of easily see where everything is. So this is the content. Okay. And if you can, you will see it's expecting a footer as well. So we're going to add that as well. So let's just, but in a second, in a second. All right. Let's start off with the title. Now the title right here is, we're going to call this one create. Okay, so that's the title. Now the content is a little bit different. We need to bring in that section of that we created. So we're just going to cut out everything. So that whole section, okay. We're going to paste it inside for the content, okay, like that. So let me just make sure I'm at the right place. Right, I did. I did paste it the right. Okay, but we don't need the title anymore, so we can delete that. All right, another thing we don't need, I'm not going to make use of the email. All right, the button will move to the footer. But I'll, before I do that, because there's a, because if you can see, if your button is inside the form, you don't need to tell the button which form to focus on. But when we move it outside the form, we need to do that. But I'm going to get to that in a second. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, instead of half width, we're going to make the width full. So it takes... Well, basically the whole space and I'm going to remove the shadow All right that's the content we got our form right here by default let me just actually do this and here is the form all right so here is the name okay so this is what we're going to be working with everything stays the same don't have to worry about changing anything you can obviously if you have additional fields you can add them still in here no problem. Right, so that's the form right there. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to work on our button. So let's move just like this. That's a form. So this slot is for that content. 
And underneath this, we're going to add another slot. Now, this slot is responsible for the footer. Okay. Uh, just going to add the name and it's going to equal to the footer. Now we're going to have two buttons in here. We're going to have the cancel button. So if the person doesn't want to create a tag, all right, they want to can click this cancel button. And the other button is basically the submit button. But as you can see, it's outside the form, but I'll quickly show you how. So let's copy out this one. Let's remove the button between the form tags, just like that, and move it in the footer. Right, this is our submit button, but we're going to quickly create a cancel button. So I'm just going to add here cancel button. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to make use of Jetstream again. So XJet. And they got a button called secondary button. Like this. All right, in order to view that, if you go in here, you will see under your vendor folder, you will see there's a secondary button right there. And you can style it and do it whatever you guys want with it. Okay. So let's go to the store right here again. Now, for the cancel button, we're going to add a wire click on it. So let's go to wire click. Now, this is going to be responsible for toggling that property. Okay, so I'm just going to do toggle. So the toggle right here, this is a method that comes, quite a nice helper that comes with LiveWire. Okay, so you don't need to code that. It comes with the LiveWire command. Okay, so and then we're just going to toggle that open modal. Okay, the property right there. So if it's true, we set it to false. If it's false, we set it to true. Okay, so that's basically what it is. But if, if we click this and we actually see this button is set to true, and if we click this button, we will just set it to false. Okay, so in here, what we're going to do is we're just going to add localization and we're just going to say cancel. Or you can say, never mind. Never. All right, by default, uh, if you have a Jetstream installation, they will make use of saying, never mind. And you can do that as well. It's not a problem. All right, so we got our toggle in there. And while we have a wire loading, but we don't have to do that, we can just say cancel button like that. All right, the next thing is our submit button right here. Since our submit button is outside our form, what we need to do, we're going to add an ID and we're going to call this one submit form. Okay, or you can call it whatever you guys want. It just kind of be something that you guys can, you know, remember or when you see it, it makes sense. So, all right, so on our button itself, we're going to call a form and we're going to equal that to that submit form that we created with. Let me just copy this. Otherwise, if you make a spelling mistake, you're going to have a little bit of issues. All right, so now we've got our submit form right there. Okay, no problem. So now if we click this button, when we create it, what will happen is it will go to this right here and then look for that ID and it will submit this form. Okay, awesome stuff. Obviously, the next thing we need to do is we need to link this um, LiveWire component in our index view. Right, so if we go to app HTTP LiveWire tags dot index, this one right here, right, which we finished up in the previous episode, we're still going to continue with this. We're still going to create the view, but for now, what I want to do, I want to link that LiveWire component in here. Okay, so let me just delete this. Right, so what I want to do, I'm just going to give this a class. Uh, let's give this a class of overflow hidden. Uh, just go for hidden and we just want to give it a border so this is obviously going to be for our form the index view right there so i'm just quickly going to give it some classes i'm just going to do a border gray of let's say 200 and then we're just going to give it a shadow and when it's small, we just want to go around it, LG, like that. All right, now the next thing in here is basically responsible for our LiveWire component. So we're going to add here LiveWire store component. Okay, so let's quickly bring it in here. Um, actually, yeah, 
Yes, let's bring it in here. So we're just going to say live wire tag stored store. This one right here. Okay, so now our component is in. Right, so this is currently what it looks like. So I'm obviously still going to add the index view right here with all its uh, methods and everything. So right now, as it is, if we click this, you can see we get the modal popping up right there. The button still disabled if nothing is added in there. So we're just going to say, this is the validation, everything still works. All, all good. So if I click, never mind, it just clears it. So as you can see, if I bring it up again, it still shows. So if I do create the tag, as you can see, tag created right there and the message disappears. All right. So that's what I want to do for you guys. So if you think it's worth it, if you like it, please like it. <laughs> if you have any questions, feedback or suggestions, please leave it for me in the comment section. I do read them. As you guys can see, uh, this video was dedicated to one of our viewers, Davidson. So he requested this, so I'm doing it for you guys. So please respond, feedback, and all that kind of stuff. Thank you guys, and see you in the next one, where we're going to create the index view. And yes, thank you guys. See you there. Adios.